you, you've talked about intermittent fasting. Um, can we define what intermittent fasting is, uh, especially with relation to like calorie restricted feeding and time restricted feet? restricted feeding? I mean, what do those mean to, to you? How do you define them? Intermittent fasting is an eating pattern that includes intermittent uh, periods in a ketogenic state. That is, uh, uh, time periods where liver derived glucose is depleted and ketones go up. So if, if and typically that takes 12 hours or so mm. of fasting complete fasting. Uh, so if typical American or many Americans, if they eat three meals a day plus snacks, breakfast, lunch, dinner, spaced out, maybe an evening snack, then there's never a 12 hour time period where they haven't taken in any food. And there, this metabolic switch may never occur. Uh, so daily time restricted eating is where uh, one compresses the eating window into say six or eight hours every day. So that, that they'll then be uh, fasting for 16 to 18 hours every day. Okay, and that's, so then they'll be in a ketogenic state for four to six hours. If they exercise during the fasting period, then ketones will go up more. And we think there's actually a additive, but it depends what's being measured, but in some cases synergistic effects of exercise and uh, during the fasting period. Right. I did want to ask about that, whether, because they, they, they seem to do the same thing, right? They, they're both, or, or they do similar things, fasting and exercise. Similar things. Yeah. Similar things, not the same. Um, is anyone like studying whether it's additive or synergistic or should we should we exercise in a fasted state is that more effective okay so from animal studies uh we did a study in mice where we <clears throat> took mice and randomly assigned them to four groups uh control which is ad libitum feeding, they have food all the time, every day, sedentary, no uh, exercise. And we had a group every other day fasting, no exercise. Then we had a group ad libitum feeding, daily exercise. And then the fourth group is the combination of every other day fasting and daily exercise. The exercise was running on treadmill for 45 minutes and we would increase the speed and incline of the treadmill every what do we do every week for a month and then we kept them at that level for another month and then at the end of those two months we did maximum endurance test to see how long they can run on the treadmill without giving up. As you would expect, both groups that had done the treadmill training for two months had much better endurance than the animals that didn't do any treadmill running. Uh, however, in the groups that did treadmill training, the animals on the every other day fasting during that two months had better endurance than the animals that were fed ad libitum. And then we, we looked at their muscle cells and we provided evidence for uh, an increased number of mitochondria, the energy mm. power plant of the cell uh, in the exercise animal, but particularly in the animals that were on intermittent fasting, in fact, we found an increase somewhat in the animals that were on intermittent fasting alone. Um, so uh, in humans, uh, your viewers will have to stay tuned, but there are studies going on with endurance uh, training. It is known that daily time restricted eating 
type of intermittent fasting uh, uh, and resistance training, weightlifters, uh, is conducive to building muscle mass. In fact, uh, many, if not most, bodybuilders will, their normal routine is don't eat breakfast, do the lifting uh, around you know, late morning, lunchtime, and then eat after that. So they're doing their weightlifting in a ketogenic fasted state. Uh, and they can build muscle mass fine as, you know, the muscle, your muscles don't grow during exercise. Mm. They grow during the recovery period when you're resting. But if you don't exercise, the, exor the, ex the exercise is critical for setting in motion the changes in the cells that cause them to grow more, uh, you know, during the resting period. So anyway, the bodybuilders do it for two reasons. They can build muscle mass, but also since they're doing the lifting in a ketogenic state, they burn more fat while they're lifting weight. And they want low body fat so that you can see their muscles. Yeah. Um, Right, but at, we'll see what happens. And, um, another thing is, uh, my own impression is that in endurance athletes, oh, here's an interesting story. Very interesting. Um, so the, the main ketone produced during fasting is called beta-hydroxybutyrate, or BHB. And a colleague of mine, Richard Veach, uh, he developed a, a modified form of BHB that you can eat and get really big increases in circulating BHB in the blood uh, as much as you get with long-term fasts of a week or more. And then he collaborated with my lab and we showed if we, in their mouse model of Alzheimer's disease, if we give those mouse that ketone ester long-term, it um, essentially slows down the neurodegenerative process. And Richard also collaborated with Kieran Clark at Oxford University in England. Mm -hmm. And Kieran is an exercise physiologist. And she found in elite British cyclists that this keystone ester will improve their performance. This was back in like 2012, 2013. If you, if you go on, uh, if you just Google Tour de France winners and you look over a hundred years of the event until 2013, no British cyclist had ever won the Tour de France. Since then, in five of the, what is it now, five of seven or five of eight years, a British cyclist has won the Tour de France, and it's been two different British cyclists. Right. Could be a coincidence, but they were definitely taking the ketone ester, and um, uh, Kieran's not dumb. She ran this through the anti-doping agency, WADA, Mm -hmm. And they said, this is okay. They said, it's just like taking glucose. It's an energy. It's like taking fat or glucose. It's an energy source. It's not a drug. It's an energy mm -hmm. source. So now there's companies marketing the ketone ester and making a lot of money, particularly for endurance athletes. Okay, let's go back to intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. Uh Endurance is better in a ketogenic state when ketones are up. Right. Okay. Well, the, well, the many, um, but then the endurance athletes do carb loading so that they don't do that. But they, they shouldn't do that. And that, that's going to change. That's going to change. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's not go. Well, it depends yeah. on the length of the event. But, yeah. You know, if, so 
but endurance, long-term things like Tour de France or marathon or beyond, it's better not to start because because your your liver only holds about 700 calories. Uh, you only have so many calories of glucose stored, mm. no matter how much you carb load. Yeah, and if that if you if it's an event where the duration is such that that you run out of glucose, there's going to be a decrease in performance while the metabolic switch is occurring. So my view is it's better to already be in a ketogenic state rather than having glucose fluctuating around. Right. Um, okay. So there's various different forms of intermittent fasting. And if you were going to aim for longevity, would you have any, what would you kind of think would be the best? Like, like a 16-8 or a 5-2 five, five, or, or do we have... We don't know. It's, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, in humans, daily time restricted eating, you know, 16-8 uh, or 18-6 uh, and 5-2 intermittent fasting, which is uh, two days a week eat only about 600 calories. Um, and that was based on a study with, we did with Michelle Harvey in England a long time ago. Um, so those will improve a lot of health indicators over periods of months, six months, for example, in our 5-2 intermittent fasting studies. People are overweight, it, they can, it helps them get their weight down, get rid of the fat improves their insulin sensitivity. Um, one, one question, the longest studies done in humans so far are one year, mm. you know, and, you know, so beyond that, we can't say, but within that time interval, health indicators go in a good way, good direction. Um, and I would predict that would be sustained so one question on, so if you're doing a 16-8, so you're, you're skipping one or two meals, right? So do you think it matters which meal? I mean, if you skip breakfast, I, so suppose you, because your glucose goes up in the morning anyway, I think, right? So yeah. is skipping breakfast better or having breakfast? Don't know. Don't know. There, there have been human studies um, both ways. That is uh, skipping breakfast or uh, eating all their food before late afternoon or mid mid afternoon, say, uh, showing beneficial effects. Now, one question is circadian rhythms, and in in general, it's it's not a good idea to eat much before you go to bed, within two to three hours of going to sleep. So. If you're going to skip breakfast, then it's important, uh, I think, to to not eat anyth eat anything within certainly two and better three hours before you go to sleep. <laughs> right. So kind of late afternoon, and then finish yeah. before the sun goes down is the plan. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think fasting should change with age? So would it be this, the regimen would be the same and, and with sex, like a men and women, should they be the same? In animal studies, some we've done, we took young, middle and old aged mice and put them on intermittent fasting or not. And then looked at uh, effects on the brain. And what we found is that that in the older animals, there's diminishing effects, beneficial effects on the brain in mm. terms of neuroprotection. And we think it's because during what the fasting is doing and what exercise is doing is it is a mild stress on, on the cells and the organ systems. And during evolution, individual, uh, the cells and organ systems evolved so that uh, they would function well under conditions of food scarcity. 
uh, you know, predators is the best example where many predators will go a week or more without killing prey. Uh, and, you know, at the time they, they have to kill prey, they're in a food deprived state and their brains and bodies have to function well. Mm -hmm. And so what's happened is uh, they're adapted to that eating pattern and changes occur in their cells that make the cells more resistant to stress. Turns out during aging, the ways and the ability of the cells to respond adaptively to the challenges of exercise and fasting diminishes somewhat. They're still, intermittent fasting and exercise are still beneficial, but the magnitude of the effects of le is less. So if, if you're a distance runner, uh, when you're 30, you run uh, whatever, 50 miles a week. And when you're, then you look at your time in a, whatever, 10K. And then uh, when you're 50, you run 50 miles a week. And you look at your time in a 10K, it's a lot slower. So clearly the, the training effect, the beneficial effects are diminished, even of the same at least duration of weekly oh. running. I hope that you found the video informative. We will continue posting videos daily on the latest news in anti-aging and extending health span. We will also bring experts from around the world to discuss the latest advances in the longevity field. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.